everyone, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, back in December, my friend came over and she dropped me some of her old clothes because she knows I like to uh, recycle um, clothes into the blankets, quilts and other stuff. And she also gave me a bag of her old jeans and she said she really would like me to make her a bag. It was about a week before Christmas and she said her birthday is coming. Her birthday is 5th of January. <laughs> so I did say to her, that's not going to happen by that deadline, uh, but it will happen. Now, I don't know how about you, but with the projects like this, I usually wait for some sort of inspiration and I don't like to rush it because if I rush it, I normally don't like what I make. <laughs> so uh, finally the time arrived that I actually got a vision of what I would like that bag to look like and I'm ready to cut into those jeans. For after project comments and suggestions stay till the end of this video. So jeans is great fabric to work with to make a quilt uh, normally but those jeans are as colorful as you can see. She's a very col colorful lady. Uh, they are all quite stretchy, so this is not that like a proper jeans, it's it's uh, jeans with elastic. So before I start uh, any drafting and any cutting and, you know, piecing things together, I need to stabilize it. So what I will be using for stabilizing it is a um, interfacing I normally use for my uh, t-shirt quilts. So it's nothing branded, it's really off the shelf from the uh, shop. I normally buy my stuff from, from the quilting shop. And what do they put on the label? It's interfacing white, medium weight, ultra soft. So normally, you know, with the t-shirts, I, I want it. I want it to be soft because I, I don't want a stiff quilt. So this is very, very soft when put on the on the fabric. It gives a little bit of weight, but it's still soft. So that's what I normally use for my t-shirt quilts. And jeans is already quite thick, so I don't need to add stiffness too much. And with the design of the bag I want to make, I don't want them to be stiff. I want them to lay down nicely. Uh, you, later you will see what I mean uh, why. So this interfacing uh, will be uh, perfect. So for the design I want and for the type of decorations I want, I will first cut up all of those uh, jeans obviously into pieces and then I can go from there. So just a little bit about the using the interfacing if you haven't done before. So interfacing go got a bumpy side and flat side. Uh, the fabric goes on the bumpy side. That's where the glue is. Now if you have uh, something you know in the package and it's got instructions on how to use by all means you just follow those instructions. Now mine came without any instructions because it was bought uh, with you know from the row. So as a I always you know if I'm not sure how that interfacing will kind of work with what I do I my iron is not set up to the hottest uh, settings because I don't want to burn the glue I just want to kind of melt it that's one thing and to no steam I don't think uh, I mean at least I have not come across any uh, interfacing which would use a steam to to you know set it but again follow the instructions with whatever uh, interfacing you've got so I will just place few pieces on my and I'm just trying you know to use up all that space I can from the interfacing you could cut the interfacing to the size depending you know what project you're working on so you kind of go around it with the best possible way and it's also to you know it's good to have a little bit of cloth somewhere where you can cover uh, your fabric before you start ironing is just to make sure that that glue will not go on your iron or you can be risky like me <laughs> and just try not to touch the, the the glue side and I just do like this so uh, iron is has been now kind of warmed up to uh, it's setting to it's not on the maximum it's like between two and three and I will just place it in and count to five literally 
one, two, three, four, five. And I will move it to new spot. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I do overlap. One, two, three, four, five. What I mean, the irons kind of goes twice or three times in the same spot. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But as a minimum, in each spot, I would have been those five seconds. And I'm just going through all of that fabric I've got here. Now, like I said, if you're worrying that you will kind of go over and put your irons directly on your interfacing, then you want to have a piece of cloth and just put it on top of it before you start uh, going with the iron. And that's how you do it. It's not very complicated, as you can see. And let me just have a look at that blue in the middle fused. Just going through the edges. Edges usually... Uh, kind of stay you know they, they're kind of not fusing very well I don't know why for me at least so whatever fabric I'm using I always kind of take that under consideration that I will need to remove that edge here because it will kind of rip off from there but actually I can barely move it out so if I go with a couple of seconds here at the edge again this this is all fused in the middle is just the edge so if I cut my shape here later I'll be good to go so this is how my uh, pile of the fabric or jeans uh, which is now backed look like and now I need to figure out you know how to put it together and you can go total fantasy if you want and and my, I'm you know I've got quite a lot of it and I'm making one bag so if I've got something left I definitely can make a second uh, bag but first I will take at least some of those and I will be working here on the magic number rule which is any square square or rectangle where the side is dividable by two plus allowance so that's how I'm going to be working I've got a couple tutorials where I'm covering it more detail I will link it in the description below so first I need to cut them up with those longer ones uh, I might go with the bigger rectangles here and then maybe square and then there may be some smaller rectangles I don't know I will just kind of play with the fabric cutting my uh, trouser parts and I've managed to cut quite, quite a lot of six and a half inches those are on six and a half by four and a half nice pile of four and a half squares four and a half by two and a half and some two and a half inch squares so you know it gives me nice variety of the fabrics and shapes but I also have got some scraps and I haven't cut everything yet so if I need to reach out and you know cut a particular color or, or shape I still got uh, a lot of those uh, fabric pieces uh, I've got the diagram here of how, how I want my bag to to kind of look like it's you know it's it's standard recta rectangular shape with a uh, squared up bottom uh, but it's going to be quite big I will post it on my polar quilting with friends group page so you can um, once you see the bag and you like to have something similar uh, size wise you'll be able to take it from there but just just quickly uh, with the rectangle the front bit will be 18 inches uh, by 15 inches tall and it's going to be uh, 6 inches deep so all of this is uh, you know all uh, drawn here and I've also included in my uh, plan uh, half an inch for sewing it together so uh, I've planned that it will be all one big piece you know front and back and the and the bottom and the sides will be all in one piece so uh, there's only really uh, just the side seams I, I need to worry about and it's going to be like I said uh, quite big and then obviously handles I will think about it a little bit later when, when I'm at this stage it will be lined so I need to obviously make it from 
this fabric and, and some lining fabric and put some pockets in so we'll go through it uh, through the process. First thing I need to use my uh, kind of sketch to lay out the pieces so I can make that uh, the front part of the box. So as I said it's 6 inches uh, in depth so I can actually use by and 18 inches so I can actually use three of those big squares and that will be the middle section for the bottom and then I can build around up to that size I need. So let me quickly, well, let me design it uh, the way I like it and, and we'll go from there. So because of the space I've got, I laid out kind of top or one part of the back, one side of the back and whole of the bottom. So once I've stitched this, I kind of can turn it around and do the other side of the back. So here I've got 18 inches uh, and, and 6 inches as per diagram. Then we're going up, but the sides I've got them a little bit bigger because that's 4.5 inch square. So like say it's 4 finished. And I should have a three and a half unfinished, so I will trim it a little bit uh, when I finish stitching it. So when I was placing the colors, well, it, it kind of is random, but I just wanted to make nice variety of the colors. This this bag is going to be embellished a little bit more later, so I wasn't so much worried that you know I've got I don't know those two colors next to each other. They actually this is actually quite nice color as a background. So uh, for what I want to do and I will show you so yeah I just played with the colors just to have a nice balance there all the colors to be used. Uh, if I start from this section here it looks like the, this is the best one so I can stitch those two together then I will stitch those three together I will stitch those two together I can now then stitch all of it here together those two together and I will add it in here. So you kind of have to plan it what is the easiest way. So that will be one section stitched. This is going to be second section stitch because it should be similar way. So I can those two together then with the red, those three, those two and then they, they will fit in together and that will be third section again similar way. Those three just quickly you now they can be stitched together and added to the rest of the back. So let me let me carry on with uh, stitching it uh, then I will design similar way the other side of the bag and once I've got a big piece ready to be worked on uh, I will show you the next step I finished stitching uh, my panel, so front and back, and this is the bottom. And I did iron it slightly, slightly to be fair, because it, it is a jeans fabric, so I'm not so worried about making it like you know totally flat. And also, I'm not so precious about the seams either, as you can see. I just put it on my iron board, flatten it out with my hand, and just go with the iron on top of it. It's going to be a bag, not a quilt, and to be fair, even with the quilt, I would probably would have done the same thing. If fabric wants to change direction because that's how it's filling it, then I would leave it at that because that will make the blocks the, the flattest possible. So, looking good so far. Now, I need to kind of go through my uh, measurements just uh, quickly, making sure I've got them all right. So, this uh, bottom bit needs to be... Uh, let me just have a look. Okay, so the bottom bit needs to be 18 inches uh, long and 6 inches wide after I've stitched it. So at the moment 6.5 then obviously 
I take quarter inch from both sides will be fine but it is a little bit too long uh, so I just need to trim it now you can center it if you want I mean it depends what I would have put at the bottom um, it can be centered or it doesn't have to really so yes it's obviously because it's three uh, squares of six and a half inches so I will have a half an inch too much so I just need to trim that half an inch from the side and like I said I'm not worried about centering it here so just quick trim so that's the bottom is going to be ready now the panels needs to be 25 inches wide and that's including the both seam allowances on the side so I've got at the moment well the ruler is 24 and then I've got here another two and a half so it's slightly too big decision to make either I want to have the bag big bigger or I want to trim it now because I've trimmed the bottom already I need to go with actual my measurements so okay so I've got both of the pieces now ready and uh, kind of trimmed to what I want them I just need to add the bottom bit and how I will do it I'll just fold it into half find the middle fold into half those pieces find the middle and just stitch at the bottom from both sides that's that's not difficult so that will give me then this uh, shape of the back here uh, then the next step will be to pin it to the batting uh, I'm using for batting a fleece for batting you can use old blanket too that will work I'm not putting the backing because I want to line my bag so that will be separate piece um, I will then be ready to kind of embellish my bag because I will know that where the pieces are falling into now so I can do it in that step and I will show you what my idea for embellishment is I pinned my piece and I even went as far as I kind of um, quilted the, the bottom of the bag and I just used straight stitches here. Uh, I did the um, stitch length a little bit longer, it was three and a half just to lead, add a little bit of more uh, kind of good look to it but other than that just normal straight stitching and I used the uh, edge of the foot as a distance uh, for those lines so nothing complicated. One thing I wanted to add uh, there is that I have trimmed that sticking out edge here. You know, when you stitch uh, the bottom to the side, there was that half an inch extra here because that's where the piece came from. Uh, so I've, I kind of aligned it and like trimmed it because if it was all one piece and we'll be doing it with the lining so you may understand it a bit more there. If it was all one piece, I would not have that kind of sticking out here. So I need to trim it. So I've got three and a half inch here and I've got six inches here. When I put those two together and use half an inch uh, allowance to sew it, I can then square, you know, box it up this corner, but we will get there. So that's what I did so far. And then for the next step, I need my floss threads. Now, I need but to be fair this this would look cool as back as is already so you could just quilt it anyhow you like straight stitching wavy stitching free motion stitching whatever you like you could do now and just carry on and finish off the bags I uh, have got the big back of the floss threads which because I bought it uh, from sell somewhere and they were you know they w weren't kept properly they've got a little bit of musty smell so I never use those for my normal embroidery but I use it where I know the item will be washed so I've used f some of them when I was doing the binding on the quilt uh, when I was finishing off the binding uh, I used some of those uh, to decorate the quilt itself because I know I will wash it so wh whether it's smelling at this point of time or it doesn't doesn't matter so you can use those to do some decorative stitches on your bag and you can do it by hand by all means some to some sort of borrow stitching uh, I've got actually on me now uh, my uh, vest which let me just show you quickly I've used those uh, threads to decorate and add some st borrow stitching here T type of borrow stitching I mean uh, just to decorate uh, add a little bit of more interest uh, there's a tutorial for this as well so I will post it uh, in the link below so this is what you could do with those just add the stitches as and when after you've quilted a little bit with normal uh, quilting do whatever you like now I, 
it's just almost six months since my friend asked me for the bag <laughs> so I don't have time to do it manually so I will show you how I will use my machine to add those threads to the design so I just want to pick a few colors something you know nice and juicy green this one is nice this one is nice you know I'm choosing random colors because this bag is you know very colorful already anyway so anything will go nicely with it so a few shades of greens a few shades of maybe yellow or golden ish color would be nice maybe one more blue Here you go brighter blue yeah there's quite a lot of those colors here so I will start from that range and I've got more there I can add later if I feel like I need to so I've got all of those so what I need to do is do a little bit of preparation on my machine and for that I will need a a straw I've got paper straw I did trim it a little bit it's it's shorter than it came uh, and I will need some cell tape and I need uh, something to push the thread through that straw I've got the knitting needle but you can have something else a crocheting hook or something like that to push it down so let's get prepare the machine so what I basically want to do is prepare a gauge for those um, floss uh, threads to go through and link with my needle so um, I just want to add that straw somewhere here I try to align it with your needle more you know as much as you can it may not be necessarily perfect you know you have I don't you know, your machine will look differently but just try to align it as much as possible so when the thread comes out it will be as close as possible to your kind of in one line with your needle and just add it to your machine obviously you want to avoid any moving parts here with whatever you've got uh, I've got everything kind of cased up so I don't have to worry but you just check your machine see what's moving make sure you don't put it there let's add another one okay it doesn't have to be you know uh, put so it, it it's permanent obviously just something to hold it in place so the next step I want to do is uh, thread my thread through the pipe from the top so I'm just going to Put it in and then I will use that needle, uh, knitting needle, just to kind of push it down. I'm using one uh, color f uh, at a time for the flaws, but you know, you can experiment and go with two or three uh, different colors. That would look awesome too. Here you go. I will grab at the bottom my thread. Just put it aside somewhere here so it doesn't disturb. And let's just move my piece of bag now under the machine okay so I've got my red thread pulled through I've got my piece under the machine and I need to change my stitch to zigzag and I'm making it narrow so I've got the stitch length on one and a half and stitch width and that's the more important bit is to set up to three but obviously you might need to do some scrap testing just to see how it works uh, or how it looks on yours so I just want to place my and just pull this out so make it a little bit tighter I'm just uh, I'm using the foot which got that uh, the gap in the middle not the open toe one is usually you have like a one with, which there is a clear plastic from both sides and there's just one small gap in the middle and that's the best spot I found for me uh, for that technique so I've placed my uh, uh, floss in the middle just under the needle and I will put the needle down just to see whether it catches it and I'm starting from the batting as you can see so if and I will go slowly here just to see whether my zigzag is catching properly the thread and that's where I want to be and you can like I said you can test on piece of scrap whether one is catching whether the zigzag width is right for you because different machines may have diff you know a little bit different tweaks whether the stitch length is fine you can test all of those scraps and choose where you are happy 
and I'm going to be going from the very top of one side back to the very end of the other back so my flows is quite uh, long and uh, I'm just going to go with more or less wavy lines uh, on my uh, uh, back and just go slowly if you need to kind of hold it with your finger here to feed it through do that but hopefully it will kind of work itself out here so far so good now I've got red color on the red uh, jeans here so you cannot see that so much but I will take a close up uh, when I do all that line through all of the colors first Just going slowly, letting machine pull the fabric. I'm using normal food, not the walking food here. Uh, just for that feeding, because obviously when the food is going, I don't think it would let that thread kind of fit through. So just normal. But you may you may like to help the fabric a little bit to push through if you feel like it's you know it's snagging somewhere. This pin out. Now I'm using white uh, thread to do that. You could, by all means, color coordinate your floss thread with uh, thread you have in your in your machine, so it's not so uh, visible that much. But I actually quite like that effect, so I will leave it as is. Okay, I finished the line one. Let me take quickly some close-ups of the how it looks like. So you can see I used white thread. Uh, so it's quite you know you you can you can see that white thread quite quite much. But I like that look. You could tre you can change the thread to red and it will blend in with the floss. It's really up to you and how you want to tackle that design. I'm going wavy lines through all of the piece, but you could make some, you know, designs on its own, on each square individually, on section of the squares. You can go, you know, with the squares around it. It's, it really gives you lots of options. Now, with that uh, technique, just think about options you have now with the plain fabrics, maybe in your own quilt, how you can add the detail to them. Uh, so, really, there's lots of potential with that. I will carry on with different colors all over the back. Uh, don't kind of don't be afraid of crossing the lines by all means. If you like to cross them, cross them. It's your bag and, you, and your design, and have fun with it. <laughs> so um, before I change the floss to another color, I will just make a few more lines uh, with that one. Um, I'm going like I said the lengthwise of this piece, but I might add some. Um, across as well in a minute I will see how it you know how it looks every time I do a line I can have a look at it and say okay where do I like to add something um, which color I would like to add where so have fun with it and I will show you how my piece looks when it's finished okay so my piece is quilted and I need to now obviously trim it all the round and then I can match up a, a lining for it so let me just quickly start cutting it out and I'll just start from this edge because it's just straight cut here. Okay, so I've trimmed it all around and I will fold it into half because I still need to cut those uh, corners here. Now, the size-wise, it may have changed a little bit because I have not left any uh, space for, you know, the shrinkage. Usually when you're quilting something, there's a little bit of shrinkage because of that. But... You know, I'm not working to a very specific dimensions as usual. You you know, you adopt with what you go with. So just make sure it's as square as possible, but I'm not worried if it's a little bit of you know off with the sizes. 
So I've put pins here to hold the fabric where it's in, you know meeting on the both sides. So I can now cut out uh, those corners here. And I did the same thing on the other side here. I've put the pin one day meeting and I can just cut it out. So since this is in the right place here, let's just see on this side how it's kind of matching up. And it's matching pretty much good. I think I just need to make sure it's squared up at the top. So I'm just using my mat to give me straight line. And I just need to trim a little bit at the top because the bottom part of it is a little bit shorter. So I'll just trim it there, even it out, and I'm good to go. Just matching up on the mat, all the lines. Okay, so I literally just need to trim like, I don't know, quarter of the inch just to make it nice and straight here. can see that was literally just uh, skimming the edges here to just to even it out. So size wise I probably now a little bit off from my original. Okay, 25 across. This bit was supposed to be 16 so I'm off about, I don't know, an 8. <laughs> so not much. If it was, you know, one piece of fabric and uh, either I didn't want to quilted or I would have quilted it maybe just lightly it probably wouldn't shrink that much or you know the other option is to make that uh, rectangle the whole back rectangle bigger it's obviously uh, quilted first and then cut out the shape but that's okay I'm happy with what I've got here so I've got now a piece of fabric which I can use for my lining so Let's just fold it into half and I can put bag on top of it and just trace all around it. Now, before I will start sewing all of those things together, I need to prepare a few more things like straps and pockets for for the inside of the bag. So for the inside of my bag I actually got some leftovers from uh, my tutorial about uh, door stoppers. Uh, I have four odd ones which kind of left behind so I can use that uh, to make pockets. I think I'll just put two pockets inside in the lining from the side of the person not the front of the bag so that will go nicely with it. I will just finish off this edge with the uh, bias tape, uh, ready-made bias tape, but you can use normal, you know, your, your own uh, binding tape as well, whatever you've got available. So for the straps, I will use uh, some of the strips or, or you know, some of the uh, leftovers I've got on the, on the tape. This is the narrower tape and I will uh, trim it later to one and a half, maybe one and three eighths uh, inch. I will see how they look when they are uh, stitched on top of the batting. So I will have this uh, batting to go inside and I will use a leftover from that uh, lining uh, to quilt it all together and trim it. The length of the uh, strap, so in my previous tutorial I was cutting them to, I wanted to make them, you know, 23 inches where they already kind of sewn in. So I cut those strips to, I think it's 25, 26 inches more or less. And then obviously I will trim it to what I need uh, for the size of it. So those are the two things I need to do now, which is the straps and sew the pockets, uh, or, you know, finish off the pockets and sew them to the lining. So let's get going.
Okay, my pockets and my um, handles are ready and uh, I actually started cutting them wider and then I trimmed them to um, one and a three quarters of an inch and I think that's the that's a good size so we'll go with that uh, so that's the lining I need to sew the pockets first so what I will do is I'll find the middle first just to because I've got two pockets I want them in the middle of my bag so I'm folding my lining just to make a little bit of crease there again it doesn't have to be perfect just more or less in the middle and I will place them four inches from the top of the edge of the bag at the moment because some of it will be taken by um, seam allowance later so but I want four inches one two three four so that will be my one pocket and that will be my second pocket the crease is here so I'll just place them on the both sides of that crease just put some pins and I will just stitch uh, three sides of that pocket so that's fairly easy thing to do Okay, so now I'm ready actually to start putting those pieces together. So it's just right to the right, there's normal stitching with anything else and I should stitch a uh, half an inch from both sides. So I'm just stitching the both sides here. This is already one piece, so no problem there. And then we do the corners. Now on this side, I will leave, leave a little bit not sewn because that's the way I will be turning my back around. I know normally we're leaving the bit at the bottom here, but because I've made it from one piece, then I will just make a side one for turning. It really doesn't matter which way, just I, I want to definitely stitch a little bit here and then stitch a little bit at the top and just leave it somewhere in the middle. Now I'm just going to match my corners and then stitch with the uh, half an inch allowance here as well. So this, this should all match up nicely. If I've used half an inch here, it should be nicely matched and I just stitch across here. Okay, so that's the inside bag ready. There's a hole here to turn it around later. Pockets are here. So I will do exactly the same thing with the main part of the bag now right sides together but on this occasion obviously I do not need to leave the hole on the side for turning so half an inch from both then stitch the bottom and I'm gonna be ready to put it together okay now I need to tag here the handles okay so let me find the middle first and this is why I normally put the handles after I stitch the sides because you know depending on the stitching it may not be exact and then you have you know you'll be off with the handle so so that's the middle so when it's going to be on the right side I want my handles to look like this so I need to stitch it this side with the same distance so let's have a look one two three one two three I think six inches apart it will be fine so from my middle I'm counting one two three three inches here and I will tuck my handle here and just make sure you you when you're folding your handle here it's it's folded the way you want it later to to look when it's going on the right side so i'm literally just tugging so quick zip through so it doesn't move later when we're putting the lining i did trim the uh, handles to the same size before i 
I'm starting putting them here so they should all match up. The length I put it to um, 23 ready so I put it 24 and a half because a little bit of that handle is going to be taken by the um, seams allowances so obviously I don't want that to shrink too much and the second one Here I will just move this pin lower just to hold it out of the place. So I want my handle to go this way. So it needs to go back. Okay. And then I can do two things. I either will try and match it against the handle I got here already. Or you do the same thing as I did at the front. Find the middle and find the same distance from the both sides. And I did stitch it well, you know, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards a couple of times to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And again, I'll just pin it a little bit lower so they're out of the way uh, when I'm going to be putting the rest of the bag. Okay, corners now quickly on that one. Okay, so next step, I need to decide which side of my bag I want to be front and which one I want to be back because I want my pockets on the back of the bag. Also, I want to install a little bit of um, like a cord type of elastic. I will again tag it uh, on the back side of the bag uh, and then I will use a nice big button to put at the front of it so it's kind of it will work as a closure of it. So let me just have a look inside the bag which one I like better for the front. I think this one. I will just make a pin here <laughs> so I don't forget which one I've marked as a front. So this one. And make sure that any pins you've got now are actually on the front side of the bag, not on the inside. Because once you put the lining, you may forget to take them out. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so that will be the front. So like I said, a little bit of that elastic. Well, let's make a bigger one just in case we have a full bag. Give us a little bit of give us a little bit of flexibility there. And again I will tag it in the middle between the handles. So that's my middle. Which I'll be able to actually pin it with that. Elastic, probably not. Okay, but instead I will just make sure I know where my middle is. So I will do that and then just strip straight stitch that here. That's tucked, and I will try to tuck it down at the bottom here somewhere so it's out of the way. But yeah, I couldn't pin the um the elastic itself, I just put the pin and I kind of shuffle it in so it's held in place. So next bit we are putting the lining in. Again I just double check which one is my front side. This one is the front. So when I'm putting my lining my pockets want to be on the other side. And I want to turn it around so it's right side to right side. Check it in. And I'm just going to pin it all around, uh, matching the side seams and then uh, finding the middle of both sections and pin those ones as well, just to make sure it all is nicely aligned. Because it was cut to the same size, I would hope that it will all match up here. You can either use pins or you can is, uh, use uh, clips here now. Okay, so I finished pinning my bag all around, so I'm just going to go stitch all around because we've got that opening here to turn it, so we don't have to worry about that. And um, turn around the bag and see how it looks. <laughs> 
I'm stitching quarter inch uh, from the edge and then when I turn it around I will uh, top stitch it uh, again uh, probably about half an inch from the top so um, it's just to reinforce the stitch and obviously everything will be nicely held in place so let's get going just uh, two tips here when I was spinning my bag I've made sure that my pins are below uh, that uh, line of my stitching so I don't have to take them out as I go along especially that I'm stitching from the inside and I cannot see the pins there and two when you're getting to the bulkier spots just go slower uh, just to make sure that your machine can cope very well with it now I want to top a stitch it but how I want to do it is make sure that the lining does not show on my top edge here so you can take it to the iron board and you know iron it first or um, just be very careful and go slowly and that's what I'm going to do that edge of from the top of the back actually is a little bit shown inside so this will look very good and just go slowly and top stitch it there is going to be a little bit of bulk there now so just go slower or what you also can do is just go below that bulk stitch lower I just want to make sure that we're holding those layers in place so they don't shift. Last step is to sew together that gap we have left in the lining. You can do it by hand if you don't want it to be show showing on you know on the top on the right side or just like me I will gather it and just top stitch it. Uh, it's, it's good to take it to the iron to press the um, crease here which I will do now and then I will just top stitch it very close to the edge and the back is going to be ready. From the number of flaws I have added uh, you can see I really enjoyed the process. I had something else in mind for decorations when I started, uh, but Floss took control. <laughs> I liked the bag so much I uh, made a second one for myself. I, I used it to pack my laptop to work and uh, on another day I used it to pack our taekwondo equipment when we went for a class with my kids. And it all fitted in very well with no issues, so I know I will have you know a lot of uses for, for that bag. I hope you enjoyed this a bit long tutorial. Uh, if you use this technique, please uh, be sure to share it on Polar Quilting with Friends Facebook uh, page. I already have uh, ideas how else I can use this. So um, if you like to see more examples, please be sure to subscribe uh, for more updates. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching and see you next time.